Ladies and gentlemen, teachers and students, good morning. We are here to present to you a full enhancement restoration plan for this 100 hectare farm. My name is Jonique. My name is Imogen. My name is Lizelle. My name is LJ. My name is Ryan. Using these four vocal points, soils, aquatics, forestry, and wildlife, we will demonstrate numerous ways to increase productivity for this farm and the community of Norfolk County. Here are some short and long-term goals for our project. Number one, we will plant more native species that will attract pollinators in and around the farmer's strawberry fields. By doing this, he will not have to rent the beehives that he already is and will save money. Instead, he will create a more biodiverse habitat with more pollinators in the area. We also plan to plant grasslands in between and around the strawberry fields, and thus this will create more nutrient-rich soil, and that will lead to a higher crop yield. We plan to create grasslands, tall grass prairies, shrublands, savanna, wet meadow, and coastal marsh habitats to increase biodiversity for overall health of the ecosystem. We would like to plant a 30 meter wide forest along Big Creek River. This will lead to, redu to reduce soil erosion, sedimentation, and have it act as a barrier for animals resulting in reduced river pollution. We would also like to install a culvert to prevent, prevent and reduce flooding of our crops so that we get a better crop yield. First, we'll specify on soils. Soil is the foundation of living existence. No organism or life can exist without soil. Soil is made up of minerals, organics, water, and air. All of these components make soil, and it is done over time. It starts with bedrock and slowly makes its way to our nice topsoil we have. On our farm, we would like to plant some plants that are locally developed for the area, which are violets, sunflowers, round-headed bush clover, butterfly milkweed, and New Jersey structure to bring pollinators to our area. Also, the root system of a raw, tall grass prairie break down the soil and continually rotating the soil, adding large amounts of organic matter to our soil to create healthy strawberries. So, our main project is to plant a 30 meter width riparian zone, and this will prevent erosion and sedimentation and will block any cattle or any other animal from reaching the Big Creek River. We plan to plant uh, black oak trees and maple trees, and uh, planting the maple trees will help break in revenue. And these forests act as home, as a home to a multitude of organisms that contribute to the overall biodiversity and health of the ecosystem. Um, some of these Organisms include insects, which are very beneficial to this ecosystem. By, doing, by introducing this forest, uh, job opportunities are created to help maintain the forest. And we also plan to put up a fence here so that the cattle won't be able to reach the Big Creek River, which will prevent uh, much of the manure and uh, much of their pollution uh, from getting to the river. And by introducing this forest, we, it will allow a managed forest tax incentive program, which uh, is uh, given to qualified landowners who agree to manage it according to good forestry practices. And here, the shrublands are put uh, beside the, the, the fence. And uh, we hope to plant trees with cavities so that animals can use them for nesting, raising young, and escaping from predators. And our approach to the aquatics is to build two different types of habitats. We have, the co we have the coastal marsh and the wet meadow. Wet meadows are saturated with water throughout most of the year. They may occur due to restricted drainage of rain or melting snow. They can occur along the shores of large lakes. Since Lake Erie is in the near vicinity, it would be plausible to create this habitat. Unlike swamps or marshes, there is no standing water present in a wet meadow due to the concern with the damage that excessive storm water runoff can cause to nearby lakes and streams 
wet meadows can be used to capture stormwater. The idea is to capture and store rainwater on site and use it as a resource to grow native plants that attract pollinators. This nutrient-rich environment provides vital food and habitat for many insects, birds, amphibians, mammals, and reptiles. Wet meadows occur where farming is prevalent to help with water drainage. Coastal marshes are known for their rotten egg smell. The gas released is hydrogen sulfide. <coughs> The presence of marshes helps to recycle an unusable compound, which is nitrate, back into usable nitrogen gas. Marsh grass can be planted where barren east, south, or west facing intertidal flats are exposed to low tides, and where full or nearly full sun penetration is present for at least part of the day. During spring, sprigs can be transplanted along with a pinch of slow-release fertilizer to get the grass off to a good start. These habitats are essential for healthy fisheries, coastlines, and communities. The marshes help prevent erosion by buffering wave action and trapping floating sediments. They reduce flooding by slowing and absorbing rainwater and protect water quality by filtering runoff and by metabolizing excess nutrients. These ecosystems on this board are very fragile and require special care to keep them healthy. If we produce these ecosystems on the farm, we can protect, protect um, endangered species and provide protected living space for the animals at risk from loss of habitat. These areas are partic are particularly um, contain endangered animals. Endangered species like the bulbul lake from the tall grass prairie, the milk snake from the grasslands, the gray fox from the um, and the gray fox from the rangelands. By creating these habitats, we can, um, we can increase biodiversity uh, on not just the farm, but also in the surrounding area, with not, just the with not just animals, but the plants as well. We can help reduce erosion and increase soil fertility. The plants will, uh, with also thick root systems will help reduce water runoff and prevent pollutants from entering the water table. These animals from, the, from either side of the food chain, if they go out extinct, they can, destroy, um, they can destroy the ecosystem and throw the whole thing out of balance. With, that, with this deterioration occur, with it occurring, these animals are extremely endangered. We can help protect these species by giving them a home on this farm. Lastly, we would like to introduce some community involvement practices that we came up with. Number one is that by this farmer doing these ecological restoration plans, he will influence other farms to do the same thing and make it known in that area. In the long term, this will be cost effective. He, he may also create a farmer's market with the crops that he yields. And if he pools together with other farmers to do the same thing, food will cost less in that area. He may also create new volunteer opportunities, volunteers to help with the farmer's market, volunteers to help keep the fence intact and other areas on the farm. Tax benefits may also be granted if he donates land to the Canada's Ecological Gifts Program and the previously mentioned Managed Forest Tax Incentive Program, which is also long term. We hope that this farm <coughs> finds prosperous satisfaction in applying these ecological plans to make his farm more sustainable. Together, applying all the knowledge and benefits of soils, aquatics, forestry, and wildlife to create a healthy farm environment. Thank you for your time.